So have you ever seen a design that kind of just looks like this, this photograph specifically as a part of this little hero section? I certainly have, and usually it's from new and aspiring designers. They have a photograph, but they're not sure exactly how to best integrate it. So that's what we're going to do today in this video. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different ways that you can use photographs uh, in your hero sections, but also different parts of your layouts um, in a more creative way rather than just slapping on a rectangle like this. Now, as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. Okay, so let's take this original design. I'm just gonna duplicate these, and I'm gonna try to remember to make this file available so you can follow along. I uh, Following along, developing that muscle memory is a lot better than just sitting here watching me do things. All right, so the first way that we can, uh, and this is a simple way, um, we can simply, let's extend this all the way out here to the right, and it already, it looks a lot better. For some reason, this right here, it just kind of, it's just slapped on there, it's boring. But this, if we maybe adjust this right here so it's it reaches the top of the type and then maybe the bottom of this button down here. And of course, we can use our rulers to make sure we're doing exactly that. We can add one there. We can add one here as well. Perfect, so Shift R. Now we've actually taken this photograph and we've uh, constructed it in such a way that makes sense based on the context of the layout. So the context here is the first column, um, the height that's established by this type here and this button. And you could do other things as well. We could duplicate this, we could put this over here perhaps, and maybe just kind of further solidify this row going across and we can get rid of the image and we could use maybe a low contrast gray right here. Uh, you can make it a, a, a different color, maybe a color that's found in the photograph itself. You could do all sorts of things. Me, I'm just gonna make it kind of like a watermark, low contrast. And there we go, this is already a thousand times better. All right, so let's not stop there, let's continue on with other ideas. Um, another thing you could do is, let's delete that, we could just do this. Let's go all the way up. We could just make it completely consume the column in which it's uh, placed. So this right here, quite boring. This, you get a larger image and it's just, it's, it's really solidifying a two column approach. All right, next up, let's do another one. All right, so for this one, we can use our corners. Maybe make a real big one, uh, like this, and then we can make all the rest of them. Oops, let me just get this out. Sometimes it's a little bit frustrating. Uh, we'll do, yeah, zero, 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 there we go. All right, so we've done something a little bit more interesting here at least. At least it's not just thrown on and slapped mindlessly. So now we've got something a little bit more interesting. Obviously, we probably have a navigation up here as well. I should have designed that, but no big deal. Um, we could take it a step further. Um, let's go grab the first one. We could do something like this. So we can make, let's just make it real large initially. And then we'll get our ellipse tool. And you could do this uh, custom with a pen tool if you want. Maybe we want a perfect circle you know, maybe something like that. I will put that underneath our image, grab both of them and make a mask. There we go. Then we can double click in here and position this however we wish. This still a lot better than just mindlessly throwing on your 
rectangle or your square photograph. Another idea is we could go to Photoshop. So I already opened this up, or you know, it doesn't have to be Photoshop, it could be anything else. Let me get it on my monitor right here. We could do something like this. Um, so I'll show you how I did this real quick. Let me back up a bunch of times. I had a redo paste. Uh, so you just take a, photo, a, a brush right here, you know, like right around here, and we could change, and you can download a ton of different interesting brushes. I found this one uh, right here, and just make it a large brush. Use the background color, whatever the, the photograph is sitting on. Uh, in this case, it's completely white. And we could change the opacity if we want up here. Um, you know, we could do this. This alone is fine, but you, you know, I was having fun with it. You know, maybe we can go down to 30% for the opacity. So now when we do this, and we could keep on having fun just with creating an interesting sort of aesthetic. So we could texturize the actual photo and we can go all the way around. I mean, that, that would be fine as well, but I'm just gonna do this for now. Um, I already saved something similar to this on my desktop. So what I can do now is I can drag that image over. Let me get up my uh, browser or my folder structure here, desktop, there we go. Uh, let's replicate this. Let's put this, let's delete that. Let's put this in here and look at that. That is very cool in my opinion. So not, you really don't see enough people do it these days, but texturizing your photos, doing interesting things like this, really gives you a cool aesthetic, in my opinion. Um, and then finally, we can also do something, and this is more of a typical approach that you see in modern layout design. Um, let's just give us this a little, some, uh, a little bit of border radius, something like that. Um, and then we can overlap elements, be that 3D elements, um, just simple 2D uh, elements. What we could do is, uh, let me find my reference file. Uh, for instance, 3D elements. Look at that. So now we're just making a lot more interesting. So we could replicate this again. By the way, I found this particular 3D element on the Figma community section. So you could just search for all sorts of stuff like this. Um, we could also add 2D elements or watermarks. This is another one that I found. Let's put this to the back. Maybe position this right here. And there we go, we've just made this so much more interesting. So if we compare that one to this one, maybe we'll put this right here. Which one would you rather design? Or which one do you think is better rather? thousand times better right here. And we did it literally within a few seconds. And that is that. So hopefully, as you can see, I, going forward, you have so many different options from which you can use uh, photographs intelligently in your designs. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and I will see you all soon. Oh, make sure to check out designcourse.com too. Goodbye.